So I just bought the FE4202 as my first tier 8 premium tank, well aware that it's not the best tier 8 premium. Again, it's one of those tanks I just really like the look of. And this game right here, um, it's going to get tense even though my score won't reflect it. And I think it's pretty uh, representative of this tank. We're top tier on this China map. and. I'm really worried about the Borask right now and the CS53 because those are the guys that are going to go to the middle. They're fast enough to get there before me. I Luckily I have a T50-2 and an EBR with me who, as you can see, will figure out if the Borat and the CS53 are actually going to be there. And I'll let the EBR go in front and I pause here for a second and get to shoot at well, what a surprise, the 57. And the Borat and the CS53 are just nowhere to be seen right now. So this is great. And this does allow me to go up here in the middle. Now you can see there on the map that we have a pretty decent amount of tanks coming with us. That Progetto 54, who's definitely going to play a huge role later. The T20, the Pershing, it's looking pretty decent. So I think, okay, maybe one of the enemies will peek. And that T-71 right there. Unfortunately, we do not have anyone on the other side of that crossing to counter him. Which means that he's actually in a really powerful position right now. Because he can shoot our tanks on the side, and they can't really do much. Uh, if they also want to engage the P-43. For now, I think, okay, we have a decent amount of heavy tanks and me uh, medium tanks there, so I'm going to leave them alone for a second, and I'm going to see if I can shoot someone on the southwestern end of the map. I try that for a few seconds. It's not working out, and if you look at the map again, you'll see that in the center position to my northeast, there's more and more enemy tanks piling up. Tell my team that I'm going to come back and support them. And now the T-71 has actually gone across and just gone into an even better position. And this is a pretty tense situation right here because we are, in a way, surrounded. You can see their friendlies already dying. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to move up. So these tanks right here can shoot my friendlies in the back. Which, unfortunately, allows the T-71 to shoot me in the back. So, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to have to take it. Somebody has to take him out. I want to keep these guys from shooting my friendlies. I get ammo wrecked. I'm down to less than half health with enemies all around. But I am. I have. I, so I'm ammo wrecked and I'm low health, but I have to move forward far enough that these guys can't shoot my friendlies. Which is only halfway working, and I have no idea where that shot went. T71 is down. Progetto on their team is still there fighting our Progetto. And here I'm just trying to get a few shots in, bounce and get a crit. This armor is... I mean that angled frontal plate can do a little bit, but not much. So pressure is off a little bit right now. However, I'm really worried about that Progetto 54 coming back and there he is. And he does hit me and now I'm a, now I'm a one shot for... No, I'm, I'm a two shot for most tanks. So I want to... Basically, right now, all I want to do is keep that Progetto and that IS from shooting our friendly tanks in the back. So I take this position right here behind this rock and just wait for the Progetto. And there he is. No, that's a T20. So even more tanks have shown up there. So if I wasn't in this position right now, this would definitely be a loss. Because that IS, that Progetto and that T20, they would just push around and kill our IS and our Progetto. So this right here... I mean, most tanks could do this, if you have any kind of turret armor. This tank is definitely not special in that way, but it works well enough to play in this position, let's put it that way. 
And I have no idea how that IS managed to shoot me there. I think it was firing heat. I think I heard a sizzle. Progetto's being a little bit aggressive there. And because I was ammo wrecked earlier, he actually underestimates my reload. And is and he really also wants to shoot our tanks in the back, which I can understand. And you'll see him underestimate my reload, because here he is, and I'm like, okay, I got you. No, I don't, because I low roll, and he's like, okay, if he fired, I'm going to move up. And he doesn't realize how fast my reload is. So take him out. And now this, the pressure's, pressure's pretty much off right now. Score is looking relatively good. Less good now. That T-52, T-50-2 definitely try to help us here. Props to him. And, um, well... Let's just see how this develops. We have a lot of tanks in the southern end of the map, not really doing that much. And I'm mostly worried about the T-20, even though he's completely relocated. And here I'm thinking, okay, Progetto's moving in front. I'm gonna help him. I have premium ammo loaded. I can do something about this IS. As it turns out, Progetto probably has an autoloader. Uh, doesn't need the help. So this is looking pretty great. Let's just see what we can do about this T20. Kind of got to worry about that 57 though. And yep, this is another crucial moment of this game. Because look, I ping the map, I tell the projector to fall back, because that 57 is flanking him. How's this gonna go? Oh yeah, I think this was another crucial moment in this game. Because... From the Progetto's reaction, who's pretty much carried this game, he says, thank you explicitly, I, I'm not sure if he saw that 57 coming out. I'm not sure how this would have ended with him on 14%, chasing after a T20, if he hadn't been aware of the 57. So you can see, I've only done like 2000 combined. Definitely not a great score, but I think this tank was really influential in this game. And that's kind of what you have to do in this tank. It's definitely, it's not really much better than other tanks in the supporting role. I guess its accuracy is okay, which does help with that supporting role. But really, nah. This thing needs a buff. It doesn't have to be crazy good like other tiered premium tanks. And um, speaking of buffing tiered premium tanks, how ridiculous is it that they buffed the Senlac, the tier 8 British premium light tank, while the rest of the light tank branch is completely useless. Why are they not getting called out for this? I don't get it. Like, that is such a bitch move. Really pisses me off. I wonder if this thing's ever gonna get, you know, the treatment it needs. Maybe when that new uh, British medium line comes out, that sort of, I heard talks about a little while back with um, some Cobra tank autoloader. I don't know. You'll find it on YouTube. I'm not going to do a video on it. 